Hi everyone, welcome back to Dr. Han's Classroom Pro. Now let's talk about antivectral viral or more specifically anti-HIV drugs in this lecture. Now because this is a quick review, we will skip the virus pathophysiology, pathology, uh, and a full lecture on HIV AIDS can be found by clicking the link in the description box below and the link up above after watching this lecture. Now in this quick review, we will focus on drug classes that are designed to target the different stages of the HIV viral cycle. Now we will not put too much focus on individual drugs uh, and the clinical use in this particular uh, video. Now instead, we will focus on the mechanisms of action on each drug class. They are fusion entry inhibitors, NRTIs, and an RTIs, integrase strand transfer inhibitors, and protease inhibitors. Now we have three drugs that belong to the fusion and entry inhibitors. While they all work to prevent the virus from entering the host cell, there are some subtle differences between blocking fusion and blocking entry. The major HIV fusion inhibitor is antheritide. Now, it is a synthetic peptide that mimics a portion of the GP41 protein. And by binding to GP41, antheritide prevents the conformational changes necessary for viral fusion, and therefore inhibiting HIV entry into host cells. Entry inhibitors are similar but they bind to their target after the variant is already attached to the T-cell. The Maratheroc, this drug blocks the CCR5 co-receptor on the surface of CD4 positive T-cells and preventing HIV from entering these cells. It is used in combination with other antiretroviral drugs. This drug only works against HIV strings that use CCL5 exclusively and not against HIV strings that use other T-cell co-receptors for binding. We have another one, which is a monoclonal antibody, Ibelabzumab. It blocks uh, the HIV entry after variant binding to the T-cell. And by binding to CD4 and preventing internalization of the virus. It works against CCL5 and CXCL4 specific strings because it works directly on the CD4 receptor located on the T-cell. NLTIs stands for a different big class of drug, which is the nucleoside nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Now the following is the drug list, and they all block the reverse transcription step in the viral cycle. Now before we moving on furthermore, let's have a quick review on the differences between nucleoside versus nucleotide. During the DNA replication or polymerization process, each base is added to a growing DNA strand must be in a the triphosphorated form. And a nucleoside is composed of two components, a nitrogenous base and a sugar molecule. It lacks a phosphate group. And a nucleotide is composed of three components, a nitrogenous base, a sugar molecule, and one or more phosphate groups. And for NLTIs, uh, they all look like or make, make natural nucleosides or nucleotide, which are the building blocks of the DNA. And when a cell uses NLTIs, these drugs are taken up by the reverse transcriptase enzyme and incorporate into the growing viral DNA chain. Now, once an NLTI is incorporated into the growing DNA chain, it lacks a 3' hydroxyl group, which is necessary for the addition of the next nucleotide. And as a result, the addition of the subsequent nucleotides is hindered or inhibited, and the elongation of the DNA chain is terminated. 
and the incorporation of NRTIs into the viral DNA chain uh, effectively prevents the completion of uh, DNA synthesis and therefore inhibiting the replication of the virus. Now we have a different class of drug that also inhibit the reverse transcript process, we have NNRTIs. That stands for non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Now, uh, and this is the drug list. And they all block the reverse transcription step in the viral cycle. NNRTIs, unlike NRTIs, they bind to a specific site on the reverse transcriptase enzyme and they do not act as a substrate for the enzyme. Instead, they bind at a hydrophobic pocket near the active site of the reverse transcriptase. And the binding of NNRTIs induces a conformational change in the reverse transcriptase enzyme. And this change is called allosteric inhibition. And it hinders the catalytic activity of reverse transcriptase. And the conformational change caused by NNRTIs disrupts the ability of reverse transcriptase to convert viral RNA into DNA and effectively prevents the DNA to grow longer. Now, because NNRTIs are not nucleoside or nucleotide derivatives, they do not need phosphorylation to be activated and as a drug. Moving on to the next class, we have integrase strand transfer inhibitors. And they target the integrase enzyme, which is responsible for the integration of viral DNA into the host cell's genome. Uh, INSTIS bind to the integrase enzyme at its active site. And this binding is specific to the integrase enzyme and does not interfere with other cellular processes. The integrase enzymes perform a series of reactions, including the cleavage or cutting of the whole cell DNA and the integration of the viral DNA into the host genome. And these drugs interfere specifically with the strand transfer step of this process. But without successful integration into the whole cell's genome, the virus cannot produce new infectious particle and the progression of the infection is halted. Moving on to the next class, yes, which is the last class here, is the protease inhibitors. Now they are designed to block the activity of the protease enzyme and preventing the maturation of new viral particles. And here's the list of all the HIV protease inhibitors, and there are a few more, but these are the common ones. Now notice that uh, lopinavir is combined with ritonavir. Now ritonavir, in this case, is does not have a huge activity as a protease inhibitor, but instead used as a booster or pharmacokinetic booster to increase the drug concentration of the combined drug, in this case is uh, lopinavir. Now, in terms of the mechanisms of action, after the viral RNA is transcribed and translated into proteins, the long chains of viral proteins need to be cut into smaller functional pieces to assemble into new infectious viral particles. And the protease enzyme is responsible for this cleavage process. HIV protease inhibitors are designed to mimic part of the viral proteins, and when these inhibitors bind to the protease enzyme, they fit into the enzyme's active site and preventing it from functioning properly. Now, this inhibition prevents the enzyme from cleaving the launching of viral protein into smaller functional components, and without proper cleavage of by the protease enzyme, the newly formed viral particles are not infectious and are immature, and they cannot go on to infect new host cells.
Now that is all on this brief quick review of the basic pharmacology of HIV antiretroviral drugs. Leave me a comment if you have any question, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.